In this video, I have compiled three AFK money-making methods within RuneScape together that I have already previously talked about on my channel. So if you are new or you have not seen any of these methods before, welcome and I hope you do enjoy. Let's dive in. In this method, we're going to be talking about AFK and Abyssal Beasts. As for the requirements, you are going to need 109 Slayer in order to do any kind of damage to them. Also, 90 Necromancy, just for you to have the abilities to be able to dish out damage to them. As for the recommended 95 Prayer for your Curses, you're going to want to use Deflect Melee here, so it's pretty recommended to have Curses unlocked as well. Also, if you have it, the Spring Cleaner, which I believe everybody has the Spring Cleaner by now. You get it through Treasure Hunter, or maybe you get it from Diango. I'm not exactly sure how you get it nowadays, but they drop tons and tons and tons of alkables. So a Spring Cleaner is highly recommended here. If you want, if you have it, Charm and Imp, they do drop charms here and there. So you can get a little bit of a passive summoning experience while doing the AFK method. But if you have it, you don't really need to bring it with you. As for GP per hour, you're looking at about 7.1 mil GP per hour, which isn't too bad for something that's AFKable. You're also going to be looking at 1.1 million XP an hour for Necromancy, which is absurd. Also along the way, you're going to be looking at 350,000 XP per hour for Constitution as well. Now for the gear, I'm running with the tier 90 Necromancy set which does wonders for this. So this is showing you that you don't need the top tier gear in order to AFK this method. I'm also gonna be running with the tier 90 weapons as well. As for the aura, I am gonna be running with the vampirism aura for the cape, the Zuck cape. If you have it, you take it everywhere with you. There is no wrong with it at all. And the necklace slot, I'm going to be running with the demon horn necklace, which goes great with the Atune Ectoplasmator for all your prayer renewals while AFK. For the ring slot, I do have Luck of the Dwarves. You can bring Ring of Fortune. You can bring a DPS ring. I'm only bringing the Luck of the Dwarves just for that, you know, 0.001% chance for the certain ring drop that everybody chases after. As you see, also a nexus to hold all of my ruins, and I am bringing a scripture of when God book just for that extra DPS since this is an AOE area. Now for the inventory, I do have some potion reservoirs. That's just to make this super AFKable. I also bring along some holy aggro overloads just to aggro all of them because sometimes they do lose their aggro towards you further down into the fight. Now you do bring some emergency food because you never know when something does go south. Ancient Elven Ritual Shard is one of those things that I always have in an inventory, but you don't necessarily need it for AF Cannon as long as you have the Demon Horn and the Attuned Ectoplasmator so your prayers stay up. If you don't have those two things, yes, the Ancient Elven Ritual Shard is a huge thing to put into your inventory. Now, if you have it unlocked, Enhance Excalibur, you know, for all your healing, if you absolutely need it, it's a great safety item to have in your inventory in case something wants to go south as well. We also have a buttload of magic note paper. They drop a bunch of different things to where you might have to note them up like some dragon stones. So if you don't have a gem bag or something like that, the magic note paper would work wonders for you. If you have the mask of the abyss, it is super helpful because it does teleport you straight to the asylum over in Satestin. So if you have it, make sure it's with you so you can easily teleport there. Spring cleaner, of course, is in the inventory, like I said. These guys drop a bunch of alkables. So if you have it, make sure it is in your inventory before you head to the asylum. Also, the charm in it, like I said, if you have it, you can bring it. You can get some passive summoning XP while doing this AFK method. But again, it's not a necessary thing to bring along. After that, we do have the attuned ectoplasmator. That is super important if you want to make the super AFKable if you have the demon horn necklace. As for the Reaver Bar, it is pretty simple, it's pretty self-explanatory. To start off, you're going to want to Conjure Army, more the merrier, Conjure Ghost right after, Spectral Scythe, which is one of your biggest AFK hits during this method. Then you're going to do Soul Strike, which is also another AoE ability, Blood Siphon, another AoE ability, but it also heals you. And then you have Soul Sap, and then you have Touch of Death, just for some fillers. 
you can play around with this reaver bar you can maybe add sacrifice or maybe even divert if you want to try to gain as much adrenaline as possible while afk now to get to the Centestin asylum there are a few ways that you can go so the first method i'm going to talk about is you're going to go to the archaeology guild you're going to run over to the table you're going to click on Centestin, and it's going to teleport you to the middle of the Centestin dig site and all you're going to do is just going to run northeast right down to the elevator. Another quick method is to use your Pontifex Shadow Ring. And then once you teleport it directly in the middle of Centestin, all you're going to do is you're going to run northeast towards the archaeology dig site. And then you're just going to follow the same path, just northeast right to the elevator. Now, if you do have the pleasure of being able to attune a Portal at War's Retreat for the Zamoraki in Undercity, this is probably the quickest method besides using the mask to get to it. All you have to do is you just go through the portal and you run southeast towards the elevator right past the archaeology dig site. For the simplest method, it's simple. It's just using the mask of the abyss and all you have to do is just activate it and teleport yourself to this intestine asylum. Now, once you're all set up and you made yourself down to this intestine asylum, all you're going to do is you're going to run west, run through a couple doorways, and you will find the Abyssal Beast just on the lower level in this dungeon. As you're about to go through the doorway, they do become aggressive to you almost immediately, so you want to make sure that you have your deflect melee up and ready to go. If you brought it along, you want to make sure your potion reservoir is full and it is active so you can make this a full AFK method. You also want to make sure that your Vampirism Aura is activated and that you turn on your Scripture of Wind God Book. And then all you have to do is you have to come back and check it about every three to four minutes just for your loot so it doesn't disappear. Now I did this method from 99 to 120 Necro and I don't think there's another method that complement each other on XP and GP per hour like this method does. And if there is, please let me know down in the comments. Now, before we fully get into it, I would like to point out that this AFK method is not as much GP per hour to other AFK methods. This is an AFK method that is a full 20 minute AFK method. Unless you want to keep hitting the keybind or you want to come click on the screen, rotate it or something, then you can keep this going for as long as you do not log out. Now, for the requirements, you're going to need at least level 50 mining to be able to mine the Runite ores. But I recommend you being up to level 60 mining so you can get into the mining guild itself. It's a chilled spot. You don't have to go too far and it's easy access. Next, you're going to need Sign of the Porters, at least Grace of the Elves, because it, it just makes it that much simpler. You can just throw all of your Sign of the Porters into it. It just makes this the most AFKable. You're also going to need level 6 plus divination just so you can make the sign of the porters. I recommend trying to get up to level 88 divination so you can make sign of the porters 5. It's just saving a lot of GP when you make the sign of the porters 5 and above. Now for the recommended. I recommend your best pickaxe. No need to say. Bring your best pickaxe. Bring your best scaling outfit for mining. Luck of the Dwarves is a recommendation. It's a high priced, but that's for all of the Serene Spirits that are going to be popping up and the Spirit Attraction Potions as well. You can bring those if you want. You don't really need to, but it makes it truly AFKable to where you don't need to click on your Serene Spirits. As with this method, you're going to be looking at about 2.5 mil GP per hour, which isn't too bad for something that you're just full on AFK in for 20 minutes. You're also going to be looking at 140,000 XP per hour, which again, is not too bad for something that you're just going to be clicking once and walking away for 20 minutes. Now to get to the mining guild itself, for those of you who have 99 Dungeoneering, you can just use your cape. As you probably already know, you activate it, you hit your number 7, you go straight to the mining guild itself, and you just click on one of the Ruinite rocks. Simple method just to straight up go and get there. Now for those of you who don't have the pleasure to use the 99 Dungeoneering cape, what you're going to do is you're going to home teleport to Falador. Once you get to the Lodestone, you're going to run southeast through Falador itself all the way to the Arsenon shop. Once you make it over in the general area, you're going to see these four ladders. All you got to do is just click on one and you're going to pop up in the exact location that you've seen the 99 Dungeoneering Cape does take you. All you got to do is hit a Ruinite Rock and just get to work. 
Now, if for some reason none of those are your cup of tea, what you can do is you can also go back to the Falador Lodestone, but this time we're going to go north. We're going to go through the Dwarven Mines itself. So what you're going to do is go through the Dwarven Mines, run over to the side with the Scorpions, run all the way up, go through the cage, and there you are. Just click on the Ruin Knight Rock again and just straight to work. Now, for the AFK method, it is super simple, as simple can be within RuneScape. Now, you're going to get yourself to the Ruinite Rock. You're going to click on your Perfect Juju Mining Potion, which if you guys don't know what that does, simple case is once you hit it, it lasts for one hour. One hour, believe it or not. But that corresponds with your Ruinite Stone Spirit. So every time you're, you get an ore, your stamina refurbishes, basically. So this is what makes it... AF cable along with the sign of the porters with grace of the elves now if you guys are running with the spirit attraction potions as well you can throw those into a potion reservoir which will make this a hundred percent AF cable so you don't have to click on the serene spirits every single time they do pop up so in this case I have the luck of the dwarves for the spirit attraction potions that are big will be going on every 15 minutes i do have the 99 mining cape which will help me get some more geodes and some more critical strike chances while mining the runet ores so for this method all you need is your best pickaxe grace of the elves or sign of the porters your perfect juju mining potion and your stone spirits in this case it's going to be runet stone spirits this does work for basically all the ores. Now the higher tier ores that you go after, it takes a little longer for you to be able to, you know, get the ores from the rock spots themselves. Now, I do believe this method has probably been out for a long time now. So if so, please let me know. If there's a different method that you can work around with this, also let me know down in the comments too. In this method, we're going to be smelting Ruin Outer Bars at any furnace within Gilinor. As for the requirements, they are super low. What you would need is 90 smithing, but I highly, highly recommend 94 for the 10% chance to double your bars. That is where the real money making is with this method. As for the recommendations, I recommend 91 prayer for super heat form. You get that curse from the light within quest, which is a very lengthy process, but definitely worth it if you're going to be using this AFK money making method. The next is smelting gauntlets. This is what makes us super AFKable. You get those by finishing the family crest and you select in the smelting gauntlets. Now you can always run back to the main character of the quest and you can always swap it for the other gauntlets that he does give out. Now, if you're looking for experience while doing this method, it's non-existent. You're only going to get 78,000 experience per hour while doing this AFK method. You're also going to be getting around 5.2 million GP per hour. That is with 94 smithing and the superheat form. Now, without those two things, you're probably going to be around the 4.9 million GP per hour just because your time is going to take longer and you're not going to have the chance to double your bars for your metal bank. Now, what you're going to have on you while doing this method is pretty simple as well. You're just going to have your smelting gauntlets, and you're going to have either Grace of the Elves or Brush of the Gods, whatever you have, so you can also make some passive income with the items that the Serene Spirits give you or the Brush of the Gods so you can get more invention materials. Now, there is skill and outfit pieces for smithing out there, but it is not required for you to be able to make this an AFK money-making method. Now, for my inventory, I just have Super Prayer Renewal Potions in there, and you'll see why when I explain how Super Heat Form works while smithing. So it's pretty key to have at least two of them for your hour worth of money making. Before we move any forward, I would like to say that not a lot of you guys are subscribed to the channel. So if you guys are enjoying what you are watching through all of my videos, make sure to hit that sub button. Let's get back to it. Now, for the method itself, it's pretty simple. You're going to go find your favorite furnace. It could be either in Fort Ferenthry. Or if you don't have four furnace even made or constructed quite yet, you can always go back to Birthorp and go straight to the furnace in the very beginning of the game. Now, if you are planning on using the Artisan Workshop, just remember that you do not gain any respect while smelting bars. Just an FYI, just in case you guys are planning on trying to gain respect while doing this money-making method. Now, once you find your favorite furnace, you will need light and dark animica ores along with ruin bars. Now for the prices of all the slow buys, the dark animaca ores, I was able to slow buy at 5,500. The light animaca 
Ores, 5,602. And the Ruin Bars for 6,170 for a total of 48,361,600 GP. Now, you can buy everything at the GE price if you really want to because the profits do come from the extra bars you do smelt while doing this method. However, gaining the most profit within an hour is the name of the game. So slow buying things could profit you a lot more as well. As for the Super Prayer Renewal Potions, you're looking at slow buying around 35,000. So about 70,000 for the both of them for the entire hour, which of course isn't going to cut into your profits too, too much. So as for the method itself, it's simple. You go to a furnace, you click on the Elder Ruin bars, and you just start smithing away. Now for the super heat form, it does take about one prayer for every tick within the game. So it's super important for the super prayer renewals to be used beforehand. So you don't run out of prayer while the form is active. And the next time you click to make some bars, it's now 102 seconds instead of 72 seconds of making an entire 60. Now for the super heat form, it does take one prayer for every tick that you use. So when you use the super prayer renewal potion, you will see that your prayer does go up over time instead of being depleted. If you do not want to use the super prayer renewal potions, you can go and get yourself an ancient elven ritual shard. It's dropped by lost grove creatures, or you can go to the GE and buy, I believe it's around 11 million GP right now. The Ancient Elven Ritual Shard will sustain your prayer throughout this entire hour as long as you keep up with it every five minutes or so to gain your prayer back. Now, if you don't have the Smelty Gauntlets, this becomes less AFKable. Instead of the 72 seconds to 102 seconds, you're looking at about 27 seconds of creating Elder Ruin bars. If you're not using them, the bars go straight into your inventory and every time you click on the furnace, you then have to also click on the empty inventory icon every single time when you want to remake Elder Ruin bars. So if you want to make it fully AFKable up to 72 seconds, 102 seconds, depending on if you're using super heat form or not, get the smelting gauntlets. So you can just sit there and let it make 60 of them and it goes straight to your metal bank. After doing this method for an hour and having 2800 dark anima cut or 2800 light anima cut or and 2800 ruin bars, we came out with 3207 elder ruin bars, which is thanks to level 94 smithing for the extra bar chance and the super heat form, which increased our time. And after selling them for 54,486,930, we made a profit of 6,125,330. That's also me being impatient and selling my Elder Ruin bars as quick as possible. And luck does play into effect here for how many times you get the double bar chance. So if you are lucky and you are patient, you can make your profit margin by a lot more than what I just did in this video for you guys. But that is the end of this video. If you guys found anything useful with this method, please hit that like button. Maybe even consider subscribing for future content for AFK money making and novice PVM in on bosses in RuneScape. But until next time, guys, I hope you stay safe. See you.